is going to be go going over some of the ways that you can break your lease. So I remember a few months ago, I don't know if you guys recall, but a few months ago I made a video in regards to um, how you can find a commercial building or how you can find like a building for your business. And I mentioned in that video that I was gonna be making another video showing you guys or explaining you guys some of the ways that you can get out of your lease or break your lease if you have to. Um, so before we get into this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, make sure that you are subscribed and let's get right into the video. So you guys, when you're really, you know, at that point in your business where you're like, hey, I'm gonna branch out into an actual storefront, that's a completely different feel than an online business. And there are some things that you are going to want to know, even if you think that you're not going to um, cancel out of your lease or buy out of your lease, even if you think you're going to be there for five, 10 years, there's always things that can change um, with not only your thinking, but with your business, with the circumstances, with the space needed. And sometimes people actually um, cancel their lease or you know buy out of their lease because they need more space. Sometimes people buy out of their leases because their business isn't going as expected. Sometimes uh, people buy out of their leases because they don't want uh, to work with the landlord that they've been working with. Either the landlord is you know, not um, pleasant to work with or they don't fix things in the building that needs to be fixed. Or maybe um, the landlord allowed your competitor to become your neighbor. So uh, they, they leased out. Sometimes when you look at like um, commercial strip malls, most of the times the leasing agent or like your landlord won't allow another big competitor to be right next to you. Um, and sometimes they do. So there's different reasons that different companies and different business owners decide to cancel out of their lease. So I'm gonna go over some of the ways that you can make sure that you cancel out or buy out of your lease effectively and um, without too much, you know, too much loss. I actually have to drive through at my bank and so I'm just gonna kind of go over what I have on this list so the first thing that I want to go over is buying out so if you sign a lease um, say you sign a lease for five years or for ten years and you decide that hey I'm not gonna be at this building for that long um, I want to you know cancel this lease sometimes you can actually go back to the landlord and negotiate so yeah, that's where your communication skills are really going to be put to the test because you are going to have to negotiate. And a lot of times, like I didn't have um, a lawyer write out a negotiation for me or anything like that. I really was just able to negotiate myself. And um, some people steer away from negotiation just because they're nervous or they just feel like if they don't respond, then it's better. Um, but if you don't respond, it doesn't go away. So you may be able to physically move your, your items, but still you have that debt hanging over your head and you have a damaged relationship. You never know what happened in the future. So as a business um, woman, you know, I want to make sure that I keep all of my relationships in good standing because yeah, although I'm not working with this landlord anymore, who's to say that I won't want another property that he does own or who's to say that I won't want another property that maybe one of his friends owns, you know what I mean? So just keeping the relationships good between you and as many people that you work with. It's really going to be a good habit to try to develop um, good communication, uh, treating everyone work right, doing the right thing is going to be um, very imperative and you guys I'm at the bank so I'm just trying to make sure that if they come back to the window I'm not ignoring them because I'm you know you know what I mean so yeah you guys you want to make sure that you um, negotiate so say you have you know 20,000 left on your lease and you're like I just don't have it my business is not doing well um, you know I'm going to have to cut my losses at this point and um, you know, I need to get out of it or say you're like, hey, my business is growing. You know, this just is not enough space. I can't really do what I need to do with my business for it to excel because my space is limited. I need to get out of this lease and find a build bigger building or say, you know, in my case, hey, this is something that I decided I don't want to do, um, not even for another two to five years. So how can I get out of this? So negotiate. Um, if you have, you know, let's say 50,000 left on your lease, try to look at it from your landlord's perspective as well. What would be a good offer for him and also for you? Because landlords are still, they're still, you know, running a business. The business is leasing you the building and they still want to make sure ultimately that they're paid. So try to come up with different, you know, negotiations that not only work well for you, but also work well for them. So coming with them and saying, Hey, I'll give you a thousand dollars. Let me out may not be too appealing to them because you have to sell the idea of they're still going to get what they need and you're still going to get what you need. You really have to sell that. So you have to figure out what's going on. Huh? Thank you.
So that's my first thing. Make sure that you make fair negotiations because ultimately, I mean, your landlord could come back and just say, no, like I'm not negotiating anything with you. I'm not gonna offer you a buyout. This is what you owe. If you don't pay it, I'm just going to bill you for it. And you don't want that to happen. So you wanna make sure that you are making negotiations that are gonna be not only fair and convenient for you, but also convenient and fair for your landlord. Second piece of advice that I would like you guys to consider is getting a lawyer. So if you don't feel confident with negotiating with your landlord, sometimes you'll get a landlord or you'll get people in business that just are not open, that are not um, open to communication, open to different ideas. They're pretty much like what we agreed to is what we agreed to. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. That's how they choose to work. But in this kind of scenario, it can be something that would be very challenging for you if you're trying to get out of your lease and you just have someone that's very stubborn, like, no, no, no. At that point, you may want to consult a lawyer, even though it may cost you money to have a lawyer involved. At the end of the day, it still may save you a lot, lot of, you know, money versus just paying out that lease. You know, that leases are very expensive. Um, renting out a building is very expensive. And sometimes, you know, you may not even realize how much it is you know for me i was paying 1600 a month and if you look at that over the course of five years that's a lot a lot of money and so this is what this guy is expecting to have so he could have very well said you know what no like i'm not going to terminate this i need this money i've already scheduled my bills around this money you know what can you do to give it to me um and if you don't you know i'm going to just bill you for it and fight you in court and so if i don't, didn't want that to happen and if he wasn't open to negotiating or doing a buyout with me then i would have consulted a lawyer just to pretty much see what he can negotiate because lawyers obviously are trained to negotiate deals and they have more experience and more leverage so i would consult a lawyer my third piece of, piece of advice is finding another tenant. So like I said before, when you are leasing a building, your landlord is in business too. It's not just your business that you have to consider, but you have to consider his too. And just like you want your money, I mean, the landlord wants theirs. Doesn't mean they're a bad person. Doesn't mean they're money hungry. Doesn't mean they're a jerk. It just means it's simply business. If you sign for a lease, then you know it's expected that you hold up your end of the bargain. That's why you sign. But things do happen. So, you know, the, the, another option that a lot of landlords are open to is actually finding another tenant. So, like for me, if I decided that, um, when I decided that I no longer wanted to uh, have the salon portion of Bad Chick Hair, I could have found another tenant to take over that building. You know what I mean? Like if he would have said, no, I'm not going to accept any buyout from you. I really need this money and I need this building to be leased. Can you find someone else to lease the building? And at that point, it would be my responsibility to kind of hang up flyers, to pretty much advertise my space so that I could get another tenant in that building um, so that he can fulfill the lease. And then I would be off, kind of off the hook for that payment because someone else would be in the building and they would be paying him instead of me. So finding a tenant is also another good avenue to look into. Um, if you are trying to get out of your lease, the fourth option is just paying the remaining payments. So a lot of times, you know, like I said before, people move and relocate for different reasons. Sometimes maybe for space, sometimes maybe just a change in desire to run that business. Um, sometimes it may be, you know, a change in financing. You know, a lot of things can happen. And at that point, sometimes if the, if the person or the landlord is not willing to negotiate with you, if they're not willing to make any type of bargain, if you don't go consult a lawyer, you know, if you're kind of just over it and like, whatever, I'll just do whatever I need to do to get out of it. The last option would be you just making the remaining payments. Um, so even if you are not physically there at that building anymore, you still stick to the plan that you originally signed to and you continue to make those payments until everything is paid off. So those are really the four um, most common options that there are when you're buying out of your lease. Again, you guys, when you are embarking on any business, being able to negotiate and being able to um, think outside of the box and sell your idea to others is going to be very, very imperative because although we may think today that our business is going to run exactly how it's running, it may not. You know, businesses turn all the time. Big corporations, small corporations, you never know. And so it's always good to make sure that you're reading, rereading every document that you sign, that you're having a lawyer or someone in your family that you trust that kind of knows a little bit about legal documents to read it with you, that you're, um, thinking of a backup plan so if this doesn't work how am I going to get out of it that you're asking a lot of questions up front you know not feeling 
bad for asking questions because ultimately it's, it's going to, this is your money you know what I mean like this is your business so you want to make sure that you know as much as you possibly can so I hope this video helps you guys if you have any questions like always be sure to leave them down below make sure that you are subscribed and I will see you guys in my next video bye